Hello photography teachers and photography students. I'm here to show you how to create a document that will be properly sized and organized when you submit your triptych for the provincial contest, the qualifier. All right, here we go. First thing we do is in Photoshop, we're gonna open up file and we're gonna say new. Now down here, don't worry about naming it, but we also need to get this sized correctly. I'm going to make this a landscape, so my width is going to be 10 and my height is going to be 8. If you're going with a vertical, you'll flip those numbers. Make sure your resolution is 300 dpi and the color mode must be RGB and your bit depth, we're going to keep it at 8 bit. Background white, you could have it as transparent or you could select your background color. The problem with your background color is it's set over here and you can't change it. So I would start with white. Now before you hit OK, look at your image size. It should be 20.6 megabytes. If it's not 20.6 megabytes, you've made a mistake. Just before we leave this space, if I had started up here and I accidentally said centimeters and I wrote 10 by 8 centimeters, then, then I said to myself, oops, it needs to be inches, then it will actually convert the centimeters to inches when I go to inches. So that needs to be set first. So again, 10 by 8, 8 by 10. Hit OK. Once this screen comes up here, we need to view extras. And down here, I want to show the rulers. Here's our ruler right here. Now, if you go over top of the ruler line and right click, you get a choice as to how it presents the information. I'm going to present it as a percentage. And the reason I want it as a percentage is a triptych, I'm going to break it up into three equal parts. Now, if I double click in that space, you could see that I bring up my uh, preference menu. I'm just going to hit OK. So don't freak out if you see that. You'll see that it starts at zero. Zero is the height here and then down here is 100%. Zero is the height here, 100% is over here. If I click in this ruler and drag, you can see I'm pulling a line out of the vertical uh, ruler bar. I'm gonna pull this out to about 33%. I'm gonna go back over here and grab another one and drag that out to about 67%. So I've got this broken down into basically three equal parts those blue lines will not show up when we actually make our document. I also like to grab rulers from the top and drag it down to about 5%. Drag another one down to about 95%. And with this, that's going to give me some gutters. So now that I'm thinking that, I'm going to grab another ruler from here, drag this out to 5%, and drag all this one all the way over to 95%. So this may create some confusion for you, because we've already dropped some lines down. And now you may say to yourself, OK, 90 divided by 3 is 30, so I need to have each of these spaces as 30 pixels. That's true. But I can't seem to grab that. Well, if you go to your Move tool, that's the letter V, it's a keyboard shortcut. Now, if you hover over any one of those lines, you're gonna get a double bar saying, do you wanna move that left or right? Here it'll say, do you wanna move that up or down? So I'm gonna move this one to 35, and this one, I'm gonna move to 65, and you could see that if we said five plus five is 10, leaving us with 90, 90 divided by three is 30, so five plus 30 is 35, 35 plus 30 is 65, and 65 plus 30 is 95. I have three equal spaces. Now that we've got that done, what I want to do is create a new blank space. And what I'm going to do is create um, empty spaces for you that are filled with a color black, just so you know the space that you're allowed to use. And I'll show you one other trick along the way here. So down here, the rectangular tool, click in the top corner and notice it'll snap to 
my edges. Oops. I'm going to flip my flip my background color to my foreground color so I'm dealing with black. So if I get it close, there we go. I also want to make sure that I have a little bit of an edge and some separation. So I will go and I won't use keyboard shortcuts if I can't or I will always use the um, menu item so you can see this. Free transform. And I'm going to grab that edge and drag that in. And you'll see why in just a minute. So I'm going to say about 90% of the width of my original width. And click the check mark. Now that I've got that done, now that I've got that done, what I'm going to do is use my move tool. I'm going to duplicate this. And I'm going to say this bottom one is called left. This will be my middle. And let me duplicate this one more time. And this one will be right. With my move tool and the right one selected, I'm going to click and hold. And as I start to move, you can see it moves up and down. Click and hold. Hold the shift key. As you start to move, it will keep that object tightly bound to a vertical plane or a horizontal plane, depending on which way you're moving. Grab the middle one. Click, start to drag, hold the shift key, drag it kind of into the middle. All right. Now, how can I get these things centered or how can I get them distributed properly? Well, I actually would prefer that this one stays on this edge, the right one stays on that edge, and the middle one is nicely um, distributed to the middle. So what you do is you select the right one, hold the shift key, and select the left thumbnail. So they're all highlighted in blue. I'll do that again for you and explain it. Click on the right one in the blue, not the thumbnail. The clicking on the blue is fine. Right there. Hold the shift key and click on the, the left one. So all three are highlighted. Make sure you're on the move tool. And right here, it's going to say align horizontal centers. And you're like, uh-oh, that wasn't right. Nope. So I'll show you what I did there. Edit, undo, align centers. So what you need to do is look at these ones on the right hand side. Distribute horizontal centers. Ah, there we go. So now this is centered. This one is, is um, controlled on the right and the left edges. This one's controlled on the left and right edges. Now we've got that distributed properly and the question you may have is, well these blue lines that you've put down, what do we do with those? Very simple. Under the view, see where it says rulers? Just above that, you've got something called extras. Click on extras, there's a check mark right now, and it will hide them. Even if you didn't hide them, those extra lines that you see, those blue lines, will not print. They are not part of your document. They are guides for you. All right, now you may think, okay, great, you've shown me that you've got three black squares or rectangles. I don't have any images in there. No, you don't. So what I'll do is I'll make another layer here. I'll drag this right above left and I'll call this left image. I'll make a new layer called middle image and I'll make a new layer called right image. Here's a really cool trick. I'm going to, oh, let's do this. We'll go with red. I'll stick with RGB colors. So with red on my left image, I'm going to use the rectangle and watch this. I'm going to fill this whole space and I'm going to say edit, fill, fill with the foreground color, which is red. And it's only going to fill that space. Click OK. So red is filling that space. Now, and then notice the marching ants are still going all the way around that red square, the rec red rectangle. Select, deselect. I only want this red to fill into that left triptych space. So what you could do is where it says the left image, right click, create clipping mask it will drop that image and it will only show the left image pixels in the pixels found in the layer below. 
So one thing, I'm going to go back, I'll right click and I'll say release the clipping mask. I'm going to use, just for convenience, a line, and let's make the weight of that line pretty big. Mm. Oh, I've, I told you I wouldn't do shortcuts. Undo. There we go. Uh, no. We've got a line. Arrowhead, take that off. So no arrowhead, just a straight line. Okay, so I've got this this white line. I wanted to show you that because if I right click here and say create clipping mask and it's clipping it in and I use the move tool I'm gonna to move the left image look at this. I can move that image around and find how I want to place it. So what we're gonna do here with the middle image is I'm going to use green and I'll use I'll just say this, edit, fill, and it's going to fill that whole thing with the foreground color. The whole layer gets filled. Right click. Uh, I, won't, um, I won't create the clipping mask yet. I'll do what I did last time. I'll grab the line tool. This time the line tool will be a gray. And I will do this. Uh, cross it there. And now I will right click and say create clipping mask use the move tool and you can see that if I go too low that the pixels from the middle layer show through if I stay relatively in the space the middle image shows through same thing with the right image I don't know if you see the sneaky little image pattern I'm creating bunch of experts out there you know what I'm doing and with here with the marching ant selected again I could say edit fill foreground color I'll click that and with this one I'll just right click and I'll show you that we will create the clipping mask and drop that in and since we got the marching ants select deselect now you could do this with images also so if you have three images that are sitting outside go up to file place so I'm gonna grab an image and hit place now whenever you bring an image in no matter how big it is it is going to fill proportionally the height or the width so this vertical image will fill the entire height of the image but the width of the image of course because it's a vertical it will not fill that whole space so you'll see that it's sitting right here above the right image and I'm going to resize this down. I'm going to hold the shift key and I'm going to grab a corner. Never grab a middle here or here. Only grab a corner. So if I grab the corner and I drag that down, we can move this up or down and I'm not changing the size. I'm going to make sure it's about right here. Click the check mark. Now that you've clicked the check mark, what I'm going to do is this right image that was here. I'm going to grab my move tool. I'm going to move this out of the way so you can see this. And I'm going to delete the right image. So there's our black space again. Now, with this image here, just right click and say Create Clipping Mask. You'll notice that you don't see it, but it's really there. So with the Move tool, make sure Auto Select is off because the image is over here somewhere. And if I click, I'm going to grab the left image. Look at this. I'm just bring it across and bring it in. So now you'll see that it's only filling the pixels for the right image. So let me just call this right image. There we go. So we'll just set that. So you could do this with all three of your images. Now I'm going to show you one more thing and that's how to set up borders so that you've uh, completed each image and you can make them all look the same on the edges. All right. So on our right, our middle, and our left uh, spaces, we're going to create a border. I'll start on the right one here. So select your right square, rectangle, I always do that. Double click in this blue area, not on the thumbnail and not on the words, but in this blank blue area. 
in here it's important that you don't just click on the checkbox because you can see we do get a stroke around the, the, the image but it's important you click on the word when you click on the word you get a new highlight rather you get a new dialog box that's just talking about the characteristics of the stroke so we can change the dimensions of it we can change the position of this I like inside I like those tighter corners I think it needs to be a little smaller and I think what I'll do <clears throat> pardon me I'm gonna add a drop shadow to this and I'm gonna change the quality of that something like and the great thing about the drop shadow is you can move that to your heart's content and I think I will adjust the intensity of that the distance I think I'll bring that in a little more so just a little subtle and click OK so I like that it's black one thing I didn't show you I'll click on effects again right there is when you click and it's editable so you could go in and change the color and here when I click on this I can actually pick a color from anywhere so just for fun I'm gonna pick the blue edge that's found in in the top so now if I just right click in this blue area see where it says effects copy layer style go down to the middle this one here right click paste layer style go down to the left one paste layer style so you could go in and you could actually just paste that style and not have to adjust or recreate anything. That way you get the exact precise styles for all three. Well, I hope this helps and good luck with the provincial competition. This is the X. Oh, forgot one more thing. How to save this so that you could submit it. When you're all done this, my suggestion to you is that you go save as. And the first thing you do, I'm just say provincial. Notice I misspelled receipts. Provincial contest. And keep it as a Photoshop file and click Save. Because if you make a mistake at any point, the best part is you're going to have an image to go back to. Now, now what you do, because you're going to be submitting a JPEG, is you're going to go File, Save As, and this is important where it says format change it here to JPEG see how it changed the postscript from PSD to JPEG that is the only way that you will successfully save your file if and I'll click Save and it's going to give you what quality do you want you want maximum quality of 12 just leave it there and I save that out to my desktop if you just go and grab your PSD and if you go file save as if you open this up and you go oh I'm just gonna save it as a JPEG and you change PSD to JPEG I'm gonna call this contest 2 because I'm gonna save it now see it says fo format here is Photoshop and I'm gonna click save now the program will save it but it will not open it it'll look at that and say uh, I don't know what you've actually done so on a Windows machine it will not recognize that it is a Photoshop file on a Mac machine it might recognize it it might not but you can't just go in and change the postscript to whatever you want it to be through the save as dialog box this is where you get all of your choices and when you make a selection there is some mathematical genius working in your machine that's going to convert that to precisely the quality and the mathematical algorithm for that specific file type. All right, so I'm going to cancel here. So I hope this has helped. Good luck on your competition and recognize that this is going to be great. This is what we expect to see when we get your files. Take care.